Benson and Hedges final, which uh, looked like being one of the highlights of the weekend, but there was much more action also to look for. The Toff 1300 CC production saloons, the first of the uh, production saloon tin top races of the afternoon and this is very closely fought stuff indeed and alongside me David Kennedy David Kennedy I think the last time I saw you racing a production saloon was in a, a not very well behaved Dubai Grand Prix yes last year when I was out in Saudi Arabia it was my first race in fact ever in a saloon car and uh, I did enjoy it even though the other competitors mightn't have enjoyed my company maybe I was a little just too rough for them but then again I learned a lot of this from Mondello and I think we're going to see a lot of it here so it's uh, Franco Rook, a very interesting mixture. There's Franco Rook on pole position in the dealer Opel Team Ireland, a 1.3 SR Cadet. Bound to be tight, and away they go. Rook makes a good start. Thompson, their front row are all off entirely together. But on the outside, it looked like uh, Pat Murphy, Pat Murphy trying to come across, and they're boxing each other in. It's uh, Franco Rook on the inside, Pat Murphy on the outside, and that's quite a traffic jam, David. Not another coat of paint, I think, could fit between the it's Franco Rourke and Pat Murphy. Pat Murphy on the inside, and I think he's holding Franco Rourke out, neck and neck as they go down the back straight on the way to Duckham's. Well, Franco Rourke, uh, surely the most uh, experienced saloon car man in all that pack. You can't afford to let him get away, get any advantage, and they're really trying to hang on to him now. But it's Pat Murphy in the Fiesta in second place, and then one of the fines in the last two years, Ivan Thompson in that Alpha Sud, who went so well at Phoenix Park recently, uh, hanging on to those two in third place. It, this, this could be a Franco Rook race. I think his times and practice were considerably quicker than the others. But I see the grid position as they started is more in some ways reversed. We've got Franco Rook, Pat Murphy and Ivan Thompson. Ivan Thompson, the man from Terran Euro, the KCO garage area. Alan Murray was also going well there in fourth place, holding on to the leader. There he is, just going into picture now. And uh, I think, uh, was that uh, Brian Chute? down the inside i'm not quite sure no it's one of the uh, opals we'll get his number as it goes past us but undoubtedly it's Franco Rook, and then uh, pat murphy ivan thompson then alan murray and then one of the 1.3 sr cadets and these cars seem to be very very evenly matched nobody seems to be making much headway at the moment but if frank can just open the car or two lengths of the other two followers they the other two followers just may block each other to give frank the edge he needs this is a very important race for frank because it's vital points for him in the Sexton Championship, which he wants to win yet again. Tremendous stuff between the first three. In fact, it was Des Cullen there in, in fifth place. But here it is, Frank O'Rourke, Pat Murphy, Ivan Thompson, very close stuff indeed, all completely different types of cars, all front-wheel drive, of course, and they're now beginning to drop a little bit, Alan Murray. But look at Ivan Thompson coming, challenging now for second place, trying to go round the outside there of Esso, a very difficult manoeuvre, but he does line himself up properly for the next uh, corner, a right-hander at Castro, and he could well take the place. He's got a tremendous piece of drive, absolutely brilliant. I never thought he'd pull it off, but that Alpha Sud is quite some car, and he's quite some pilot. So Rook, Thompson, and then Murphy, and now look at Des Cullen on the outside, going into the corner there. He's coming well up, and Jesus Brian Chute. They're both up with Alan Murray. Brian Chute uh, in sixth place, and oh, a huge shunt at the start-finish. A car that looks like Cullen. I think it's Des Cullen, and that's the most extraordinary place for an accident to happen. He must have got nudged there. A very nasty accident indeed, Des Cullen it is on the side there, and he must have been pushed by another car, surely in that position, David. Yes, the Mount Amco barrier like that, the must two cars much that must have touched. Uh, I think the driver probably will be okay, I only just hope that there was no marshals or pit crew in that area. So, obviously, Des Cullen's okay, Des Cullen is out of the car, he's fine, and there doesn't seem to be any marshals or spectators involved which is a great relief to all of us, but that was certainly a very major accident. But there are the leaders. Quite a nasty accident, that most unusual to see that in saloon car racing, but and that Armco barrier at the pit road may have been just a slight bit too low to, to prevent something like this. There is, and indeed it was Alan Murray, the other car involved in that, and we didn't see it. It was uh, such a mighty accident. We didn't see Alan Murray's arm, armo uh, alpha sud there also involved in that accident. You can actually see the, one of the wheels of the uh, cadet folded right in under the bodywork there. An amazing accident that.
Meanwhile, Ivan Thompson still uh, tries to hurry Frank O'Rourke for the lead, and we saw Pat uh, Murphy getting uh, a little bit sideways under braking as he came round Dunlop that time. Now we have in fourth place, uh, we think Brian Chute just coming down the road here now in fourth place, and he's been hired by the older Alfa Romeo of uh, number 15, and that's uh, rally man John Burns. Ivan Thompson still keeping the pressure up on Frank O'Rourke. It'll take quite a bit of work from Ivan's part to unsettle Frank. Frank, a very, very experienced pilot. Frank, an ex-cyclist and a competitor in motorsport for several years. And one of the interesting uh, side effects of this race is that it's uh, been sponsored by Toff's Menswear, and the winner of this race will receive a brand new suit of clothes, a £300 worth of clothes. So we're going to see some very well-dressed saloon car men around town uh, after this weekend. I think after this weekend they'll need new race suits because the work they're putting in there for this lap they're putting in, the, the pace is very, very quick. They're setting very fast lap times. I wouldn't be surprised if they manage to take the lap record away with them again, as has happened in several other classes today. The day seems to be very, very quick. So it's Opel, Alfa Romeo, Ford, Opel, Alfa Romeo and Fiat uh, at the moment in this uh, tough 1300cc production saloons. Production saloons means more or less as you buy them in the showroom. The only difference is you are allowed to make certain concessions to safety, which we saw a very necessary thing. And Frank came out of that sh corner rather slow and I think Ivan is now shaping, shaping up for a an attack at Shell. Yes, he is, and he's right on his gearbox, glued to his gearbox, around shell they go, a matter of just feet between them. I think Ivan has now got to put the pressure up, there's only a several few, a few laps to go, so Ivan now going through BOAC corner down the long back straight to Duckham's, and you can see Frank now is using every bit of the road, running out over the kerby. The cars never get into fourth gear around this track, they stay in third, will be the highest gear they will use, second and third gears the gears that they'll use. They have completed six laps and uh, on the seventh lap of this ten lap race and uh, a very frustrating situation really for Ivan Thompson because they haven't got a lot of power. They are more or less standard saloons so it really is racecraft that counts in getting up a position and uh, you really almost have to wait for the other man to make a mistake. Yes, indeed. Um, these cars are not too difficult to drive really. Fairly standard road cars as Alan was saying. The only problem with, with, the, with the car is that uh, they don't really have a great pile of speed, so it's difficult in getting by, and you've really got to hope the other driver make a, makes a mistake, misses a gear, or runs wide on a corner. Now, this is the point where Ivan seems to be just that bit quicker than Frank, and maybe his car is good down the straight, so he gets a good tow, and you can see him shaping up, and make an approach, and an attack at shell corner. And there is the dice uh, for third place, just going through that market. There's fourth, Brian Chute, and fifth, John Burns. And then we have Shane O'Brien uh, in another one of the Opals. There, uh, Brian Chute, uh, our commentator at times uh, during this weekend, having a very busy weekend because he's racing in both the, the Sanyu 1300 and the BASF 3-litre uh, Capri. So in between commentating, he's doing a lot of motor racing. John Burns in the red car, they're the second of those two, is a very well-known rally name, drives an 1800 RS Escort, very spectacularly throughout the country, took up racing this year. Blanco Ruff then completing another lap with this uh, ever constant yellow shadow behind him of Ivan Thompson. And indeed, uh, there's Brian Chute. Now he's in fourth place. Uh, fourth place uh, being signaled, you could see uh, by his lap attendant. It wasn't a rude sign, it was a signal to say that there are two laps to go. Well, that's a matter of conjecture. But John Burns is lying in fourth place. Had some problems in practice, but it's, I, think, I don't think he will feature much further than in fourth at the moment. But into Duckham's again, Franco Rook, the car bucketing, quite a bumpy corner of this. Ivan seems to be quite, seems to be one of his better corners, Duckham's. And I would uh, shudder to think how many wins this would be for Franco Rook if he managed to hold his position to the flag. He's had a, an amazing record, really. He uh, was a very well-known cyclist uh, long before he took up motor racing. But he's been the production saloon champion both north and south, and he was the Sexton uh, championship winner in 78, 79 and 80, writing himself into the history books with that. Up they come, up over the crest, on the Ford straight. Again, Ivan Thompson gets right uh, very close to his back bumper, but just cannot get past this Opal. Past the wreckage of Cullen's car, which uh, happened in the early stages of this race, and of course Alan Murray, both drivers, perfectly all right. But Ivan Thompson making a very determined effort, uh, and there we see fourth place man, uh, Brian Chute and John Burns still sawing away at that wheel. John Burns in 
the Alfa Romeo. And uh, O'Rourke has pulled out considerably this time. Now, with only so few laps remaining, I think unless Frank really makes a mistake or something goes wrong with his car, I think this could well be Frank's race and Frank's strong position for the, for the Sexton Championship. Still in third place, the other front row, the grid man, uh, Pat Murphy, in the uh, Fiesta, and he's really held out uh, throughout the race. But it's been between these two. This is where the story of the top production saloon car race has been. Ivan Thompson now, and with only about two corners to go, really, I don't think, unless uh, Oruk makes a mistake, there's Pat Murphy lifting the inside rear wheel as he goes through Esso, and coming up to the last corner now, Frank Oruk, uh, down, plunging down the hill to a site that he would be very, very used to, the chequered flag, Thompson still trying in second place, but he's not going to do it this time, so it's Frank Oruk takes the top, 1300 production saloons, Ivan Thompson in second place, Pat Murphy is going to be third, and then we will have to wait uh, for Brian Chute just uh, coming down the hill now in fourth place. Well, thankfully, the results of that accident weren't as serious as they looked. Des Cullen's car, you can see in his side, spun because he was clipped by Alan Murray. Two drivers who are extremely experienced in the sport. Des Cullen must have been competing in motorsport for uh, well in excess of 35 years. And Alan Murray, before he came into racing, is a very established rally and auto test champion. There's Des Cullen just looking at the wreckage and uh, a very lucky man indeed uh, not to be hurt in any way in that rather horrific accident. I'm afraid the only damage, luckily the only damage to either driver was uh, probably extremely deflated, deflated pride. Number two, there's the great Con Law on the front row of the grid. Number two.